What's up XRP family, thank you guys for joining the video again. So here we can see Goldman Sachs published this 11 months after lawsuit filed, which is very interesting. Here they say the opportunity in payments, accelerating use cases. Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are becoming increasingly popular payment option among many companies. Now this was of course a long time ago. This is, this is when they first filed the lawsuit, right? 11 months after loss, so a year ago, right? The thing is here, guys, Goldman Sachs already tried to build something better than Ripple, but they actually failed. And that is why they, 11 months later, they put this up here. Because remember, GP Morgan is also in this, guys. They literally tried to make a copy of Ripple XRP to get the better of the monopoly, but they couldn't. It's not doable, right? It is a very different animal. Here we can see in order to issue superset compatible currency and currency like commodity identifiers within the ISO 4217 scheme, a prefix character introduced denominating the source registry being either this IANA managed and unofficial registry denoted with X or the official ISO managed registry. The X guys is actually standing for a currency. For example, you can see XBTC, which is meaning some kind of currency form of Bitcoin, right? And XRP always had that. You have XRP and XDC and XLM, which are funny enough, they are all ISO 222 compliant. You think that is coincidence, guys? That's not coincidence. That's because these, these currencies were made for this future system. And here you can see also that projects ripple and ifex right standard currency codes they all fall under the same currency code so how can they even file this as a security how can the lawsuit even be possible with all this knowledge well i will tell you why guys because this lawsuit is not real this lawsuit was just meant to be there so they can pass regulation and they can actually start mass adoption and using xrp as a legislated currency they already know that that ripple that xrp is a currency guys you don't they are not stupid seriously the sec is not that stupid focus on ripple as the sole reason for xrp value is misplaced ledger use outside of ripple net will ultimately drive price by supply and demand more than odl in my opinion fact and should the u.s government overreach into the escrow public chains are very dem democratic look at this Yes, so the question here is, if nodes, validators, and the community at large got together and we agree that it's better for the community to burn the 50 billion XRP has in escrows, would that be possible? Look at how interesting this answer is, guys. Yes, there, could, there would be nothing Ripple could do to stop that from happening. Public blockchains are very democratic. If the majority wants a rules change, there is nothing the minority can do to stop them, right? So that means that it's that if, if the, the majority of XRP holders, for example, or the XRP community wants something to change, for example, to burn those 50 billion XRPs, it would happen, right? Imagine what that would do to the supply, guys. If XRP went from 100 billion to a 50 billion, that is insane. And that can happen. Remember, that 50 billion guys is still in escrow. It's less than 50 billion now, but it will get less and less by time. I think we should get some popcorn for this week. A drop by Mr. Pool saying coming soon and popcorn drop. Be ready guys, because 2023 this just started, but we are going to see some very interesting things this year. So I have a quite a long video here, which is very interesting. Fan Nelly lying under secretary for domestic finance at u.s treasury final recommendation supports a faster cheaper and more transparent international payment system that associates with a cross-border system let's take a look guys is as useful for the fed's efforts third the leadership from the federal reserve the white house and the treasury department will meet regularly to discuss the progress of the CBDC working group and to share updates on CBDC and other payment innovations. 
The second recommendation of the report is to encourage use of instant payment systems. Retail instant payment systems transfer funds nearly instantly, as opposed to the multi-day settlement period that occurs on some legacy systems. In the US, examples include the Clearinghouse's RTP network, launched in 2017, and the FedNow service, which the Fed plans to launch in 2023. The FedNow service, guys, is going to use ISO 222 from January 2023, fully upgraded at March 2023. Now, what else is upgraded then? I The whole system, whole SWIFT is upgraded to ISO 222. And these are the moments that they are fully upgrading and using the system. So understand the migration process will be for a long time. It will be two years, but they are already making huge steps guys and it's going fast the train has left the station remember global experience suggests that instant payments can make the payment system more competitive efficient and inclusive yet the potential benefits could be limited by certain frictions such as inertia slow adjustments among consumers businesses and financial institutions to change their habits or procedures to incorporate new technologies. In addition, these instant payment systems are generally accessible only to depository institutions. So to maximize the benefits from instant payments, the report suggests several efforts. First, the US government should continue outreach efforts around instant payments with a focus on the inclusion, with inclusion of underserved communities Second, the U.S. government should promote development of technologies that would allow consumers to more readily access instant payment systems. And third, in settings where appropriate, the U.S. government agencies, which send and receive millions of payments a day, should consider and support the use of instant payment systems. Now, how are they going to make uh, using instant payment systems accessible for normal institutions think about this guys think about what she's saying you always have to think what they're saying so she's actually saying that they are working on it right what is also going on right now we have a lawsuit going on you think that lawsuit is just there for fun no they're getting ready once the legislation is there the regulation is there that's when the smaller institutions in the usa and all the payment providers will start using odl that's what she's saying. She's literally saying that, guys. They're talking about a new payment system. What is that new payment system? We already know. It's not a secret anymore, right? And she's telling you that they are literally w waiting now for the right moment. The third recommendation is to establish a federal framework for payments regulation. This recommendation recognizes that non-bank financial institutions are increasingly providing payment services. They are contributing to competition, innovation, and inclusion. But non-banks that are not adequately regulated and supervised may pose risks to the users and the financial system. Today, oversight of non-bank payment providers is generally at the state level. And this varies significantly across states and may not address certain risks in a consistent and comprehensive manner. Accordingly, the report recommends considering the establishment of a federal framework for non-bank payment providers. Federal framework, there you go again. Regulation, regulation, regulation. They are just waiting. CFD, not for retail. What is the fair market intrinsic value of XRP? What is Fell Hill? capital fair market price for XRP. Is XRP not for retail? Very interesting because there is a piece here that actually suggests the buyback. Let's take a look. If the relevant governing law is determined to accordance with a certain approach, a situation where the value of collateral is represented by tokens on the distributed ledger would not be very different to that based on real world assets such as cash and securities. Despite the novelty of the novelty of tokens, 
The principal issue would be whether a court order requiring one party to compensate another could be obtained and whether it would be enforced, so long as the judgment debtor compensates the judgment creditor in accordance with the court order the judgment creditor is unlikely to be concerned about whether the co compensation takes the form of tokens a distributed ledger or cash or other traditional assets that's actually what a buyback means guys and this is something very very valid and, and possible to happen right um, here we just have a small video, guys, of David Schwartz actually confirming that he worked on the Bitcoin protocol. And isn't that coincidence? Someone who worked on, on Bitcoin also built Ripple, a more efficient payment system. Jed found me. Um, I, was I was just kind of finishing up the work that I was doing and I was looking for something to do next. And I stumbled on Bitcoin and people were having some problems with mining pools. Uh, uh -huh. The mining explosion was just starting to happen and the software really was never designed to be efficient when you had all these different miners hitting it from all different directions. So people started offering these large rewards in Bitcoins for someone who would solve that problem. I'm like, what are these Bitcoins and are they worth money? And I realized <laughs> that, that it was actually something quite revolutionary very interesting guys so thank you very much for watching the video guys keep your eyes open understand that anything can happen at any time thank you very much see you in the next one cheers